I was just lounging at home one night a couple of years back, watching TV, when my phone buzzed with a text from my best friend. She asked if we could hop on a FaceTime call because she'd been hearing strange noises and it was giving her the creeps. Being the supportive friend that I am, I agreed and we connected right away. We started chatting, trying to lighten the mood and take her mind off things. I tried to crack jokes, shared funny stories, and soon enough, my friends seemed to be feeling better and relaxed, laughing about stupid stuff like we usually do. Then, as I glanced at the screen, my heart sank into my stomach. There it was, faint but unmistakable, an eerie outline of someone standing in the corner of my friend's apartment. I could tell from her reaction that she noticed the panic on my face. What's wrong? she asked, her voice quiet and trembling. Fear surged through me so fast, I jumped up yelling at her to run, dropping my phone in fright. In the commotion that followed, our FaceTime connection was cut off. I desperately tried calling her back, my fingers trembling with anxiety, but there was no answer. Fear gripped me as I realised the severity of the situation. I dialed the emergency line and relayed the unsettling details, providing my friend's address. The dispatcher assured me that help was on the way. I tried my friend again but there was still no connection. I raced over on my bike. As I rounded the corner of her street, I saw the flashing blue glow first, then the police cars as they illuminated the night. Officers had arrived at the scene, ready to investigate the potential threat lurking inside my friend's apartment. My friend was completely confused as to why the police had come round, whereas I was totally terrified that something bad had happened. To see each other safe was a huge relief. The police had searched around but found nothing. None of my friend's stuff had been taken and there was no sign of an actual break-in, so there wasn't really much they could do. I stayed over at her place for the next few nights, but nothing like that ever happened again. I'm just so thankful that we happened to be on that call because who knows what that person was planning to do. It was an ordinary evening when I received a FaceTime call from a number I didn't recognise. Curiosity getting the better of me, I answered, only to be greeted by a pitch black screen. No one said a word and I felt a strange unease settle in. Then a whisper broke the silence, my name spoken in a chilling tone. Who is this? I asked, my voice trembling. Squinting at the screen, I could faintly make out the outline of a face sending shivers down my spine. Unable to bear it any longer, I let out the gasp and abruptly ended the call. I immediately reached out to my friends in the group chat, sharing the number and recounting the unsettling experience. We speculated about its origin, but none of us could offer a plausible explanation. Fear lingered in the back of my mind as I tried to sleep that night. The following day at school, after finishing gym class, I was getting changed in the locker room. Just as I was about to leave, My phone rang once again, but this time from a different unrecognised number. With trepidation, I answered, finding myself faced with a less ominous sight, a camera seemingly aimed at a wall. The room appeared brighter than the previous call, but the caller remained silent. As I peered closely at the screen, I noticed the faint reflection of the phone's glow on what looked like the same lockers as the ones surrounding me. My stomach dropped and my heart raced in my chest. Suddenly, I heard my name whispered once more, this time not through the phone, but from the adjacent row of lockers. My blood turned to ice as the voice said my name again, seemingly emanating from the same room. Terror overwhelmed me, and I screamed at the top of my voice, attracting the attention of my gym teacher. She burst into the locker room, but to our bewilderment there was no trace of anyone. I explained everything to my teacher, who listened with concern, but without any evidence or further incidents, there was little they could do. Since then I can't bear to even use video calls, I prefer to just talk through text. Fortunately all of my friends have been really supportive and I spend a lot more time with them now. It was a typical midweek night and I found myself swiping through Tinder, hoping to find someone interesting to chat with. 
That's when I matched with Alana. We hit it off right away, exchanging messages and discovering shared interests. Alana was attending a university about an hour away, so meeting in person wasn't convenient. We decided that FaceTime would be the next best thing to get to know each other. We had a couple of FaceTime calls over the course of a few days. It was great to see her face and hear her voice, and our connection grew stronger with each conversation. It felt like we were building a genuine connection, even though we hadn't met in person yet. Then, the unexpected happened. I received a text from Alana saying that she was coming back home for the weekend and wanted to meet up for a drink. Excited about the prospect of finally meeting in person, I suggested we have a video call to finalise the details. To my surprise, I received a text from Alana saying that her camera wasn't working. It seemed strange, but I brushed it off, assuming it was just a technical glitch. After all, it wouldn't hinder our plans to meet up in person. The day of our much anticipated date arrived. I was getting ready to head out when I received a text from an unknown number. It was Alana, or so I thought. She apologised for not being in touch for ages and explained that her phone had been stolen over a week ago during a break-in. My heart sank. If the person I had been chatting with wasn't Alana, then who was I about to meet? Fear crept in as I realised the implications. Someone had been using Alana's phone and was trying to set me up or something. But for what? What were their intentions? Was it a harmless prank or something more sinister? Alana and I discussed the situation, weighing the options. I considered going to meet the person to retrieve the stolen phone, but the potential dangers outweighed the benefits and I just blocked the number. Alana had already received a new phone through her insurance, so it seemed wiser just to dodge a bad situation. From that day forward though, I couldn't help but wonder what the plan had been. What did the person on the other end have in mind? It was a chilling reminder of how easily online connections can be manipulated.